I think that if today we are speaking about a very important and sensitive topic which concerns all of the citizens of Ukraine, it's important to mention what page we are now at. The first, we need to understand that Ukraine has the, well, a couple of words about demographic first. So, we are now in the situation when approximately 12 million of working people who are paying the unified social investment are about for 11 with something pensioners. All of the European nations are getting older and Ukraine is not an exclusion. So according to different demographic forecasts, the situation will even worsen. But all of this story is speeding up with a colossal labor migration. Because Ukraine tries to overcome this labor migration since the 90s, and it's even difficult to calculate the scale of migration. But the non-visa regimen has not only positive but negative factors which influence economy. This is the labor force leak. And of course, the deshadowing of black and gray wages should be working too. If we're speaking about the pension reforms, Though we have financial reforms, we can't help speaking about the social component. As it was already mentioned in the introduction speech, Ukraine has conducted certain changes in the pension legislation, which the government names a pension reform, which concerned only the first level and aimed for several points. First of all, recalculation of the pensions. Secondly, stabilization of the deficit of the pension fund. Because for today, the state budget of Ukraine covers the deficit of the pension fund, and this is the biggest expansion, uh, uh, expenses article after the external debt. So just for you to understand, there is an indicator which defines the capability of pensions. This is the ratio of pensions to the wages or salaries. In Ukraine, it's 28%. There are multitude of international documents which witness that if this ratio goes less than 40%, then there can be social disruption. If it goes lower than 30 or 25%, the country has the threat of national to national security without any exaggeration. So after the changes in the pension legislation last year, this ratio is still 28%. Moreover, there is the tendency, different modeling, and I'm trying to look at the calculations of the World Bank and the modeling, there is the tendency to say that every year this ratio will go lower. Moreover, people who are 35, 40 years now, their pension, if I may say, if nothing changes, will be in fact 17, 18 a percent of this ratio. And even this, for your understanding, does not show the full picture, because an average pension in Ukraine is more than 2,500 grivna, but more than 55 percent of the people don't get this pension. A bit less than 3 million of people, in fact, get the pension which is less than 2,000 grivna. Just for you to understand the situation and what will happen. Secondly, it's also a characteristic of the quality of the work with the public finance. I will repeat because in this solidarity system, the budget dotates uh, don't, uh, to the pension system. Unfortunately, this task, which was aimed by the government, and which was mentioned in the requirements on the cooperation with the IMF, which is the stabilization of the deficit of the pension fund, the government last year gave a three-year budget resolution where this figure had to be at the same point of, one, uh, of 139 million grivna, but in the draft of the budget for the next year, 2019, which the government gave several weeks ago for the budget of the next year, this figure is increased enormously. And in this draft, the deficit is 165 billion. 
Moreover, there are all of the reasons to say that the deficit of the pension fund will increase not only in the absolute figures, but also in connection with the GDP. And also, the situation is influenced that lots of categories of the citizens, in fact, have to manually recalculate the pensions. Out of more than 12.5 million pensioners, we have point half. Oh, a half of million of so-called military pensioners. This is a substantial figure because Ukraine is a post-colonial state and the parliament still does not have a law draft, a governmental law draft which would regulate this issue. There's are lots of taxes of the taxpayers and the pensions for the military which should be higher than average. So, dear colleagues, when we want to have a discussion when we should have the second pillar, very often we hear that we are still not ready, not ready. And again, in the introduction, it was meant that there were remarks again of the International Monetary Fund and our other foreign partners Ukraine is cooperating with. But the real practice shows that delaying, as far as I investigate this situation since 2007, the work on the development of this uh, pillar is uh, taking place since even 1997. And it tells us that maybe Ukraine will never have the perfect time to implement it. So we shouldn't delay this issue. We don't have any time. The Parliament has several law legislation initiatives, well, at least one of them is very articulate. There are certain debates around it, but my feelings as a parliamentary guy that the government and the profile line ministries are not ready to implement this or that model. Unfortunately, there are all the risks that in 2019, which will have two elections, the situation will be delayed and postponed again. What can we expect? What are my expectations out of the second pillar implementation? First of all is the social effect. In the short term perspective, it seems to me it's really important, whatever the model is, which is implemented by Ukraine, it's important to have the payments during the first year. It's important, well, we may, if we're, for instance, uh, in the case of death, or it's important for this money to be paid to the families because it's really important to construct, to develop trust in Ukraine because lots of discussions in Ukraine depend on the trust to the banking sector and to the state. So it's important for those payments to take place since the first year. It would mean that every year Ukraine would have several hundred of thousands of people which would have a positive or success story of the work during the second pillar implementation. But the aim, of course, in the long-term and even medium-term perspective, according to different calculations, for 2045-2050, to get the ratio of 40%. The replacement or rate of 40 percent and higher. The economic effect, according to the law draft, which is registered in the Parliament, number 67, uh, 66-77, it's not perfect, but still, according to that model, if the Parliament approves it, adopts it, how it exists now, the economic effect will be 20 million grivia during the first year, and in fact, the speeding up up till 2050 to the planned increase of the GDP could be plus 25 percent and can form 16 trillion grivna. Well, of course, for the economy of Ukraine, it's a very powerful driver which would influence for the overall development. I'm speaking for too long, yes, I have to be shorter than okay. So the last point then, and then we'll have a discussion. I would repeat again, the calculations per capita is very important, according to the law draft which we have now, that if we're modeling that the person retires in 2050 and gets the pension for 20 years more, then this sum uh, will be 2 million grivna, and the person 
who is retiring, this replacement will have the ratio or replacement ratio of 40 percent. And altogether, third to the solidarity pillar and the second pillar, this person will get approximately 16,000 rebounds. There are lots of risks, discussions, fears, so I'm giving the floor to others, but it's not to keep you for too long. Romane, I would like to ask you, well, of course, there are two law drafts. No, there is one, one law draft. Draft. Okay, one registered law draft and the other one which is at the stage of the future registration from the point of view of your law draft. Why is it better? First of all, I will tell you as a parliamentary person, uh, from the internal cuisine, so-called thing, if it's not registered, it's still a concept. When we see the second law draft, then we'll have two law drafts. I'm not an author of the first legislation initiative. My colleague Yuri Solovey is an author who is the main co-author of this law draft. There are two huge discussions about this law draft. The first one is this, uh, the size of the rate because of the calculation, what will the unified social investment consist of? Because the first year has 2%. And then gradually it is increased to the 7%. The second discussion is that this level will work only for the people who are 35 and less. And this is the second discussion, which is a very important one. It seems to me it's a very doubtful norm. It's very important to begin for all of the age categories, for people to get payments even during the first year of the second implementation, in spite of the model which is adopted for us to have a positive effect of trust and formation of culture of accumulation. It's important for effect for Ukraine. And the third model and point of debate, what's the form of the state in that? This is the centralized model or decentralized model out of what I see of the second so-called law draft, as you say it. Thank you.